Okay, so you're thinking about buying a home and relocating right here to Bellevue, Washington. Well, if so, you're probably in the research phase right now, doing all of your homework. It's pretty easy to find all of the great things there are about living in Bellevue, like award-winning schools, a prime location, clean streets. But you know, there's also quite a few negatives about living here in Bellevue, and that's exactly what we're gonna discuss today. I'm gonna go over the top five worst things about living here in Bellevue that I think that you should know about because they're pretty big. And you know, if you can't deal with all five of these things, then Bellevue might not be the best fit for you. Make sure you stick around until that last topic we cover because this is a pretty big one that I don't hear a lot of people talk about. And if you're looking for a certain type of home, Bellevue might not be the right fit for you. So make sure you pay attention all the way to the end, but we're about to get into it. The five top worst things about living in Bellevue, we're getting after it right now. Okay, so this one may or may not be a big deal for you, but if you're looking for a city that has like a bustling nightlife scene, you're not really gonna find that here in Bellevue. You don't probably have to go over to Seattle. You know, if you're looking for like nightclubs to go dancing, you know, that sort of nightlife, you don't really find that here in Bellevue. You will find a lot of restaurants that are open late that have cool bars, you know, happy hour type stuff. And, you know, we're on, we're on Bellevue way right now. Lots of, lots of cool restaurants, uh, happy hour spots just here outside of the mall. Um, but all, all throughout downtown Bellevue, you're going to find pretty good restaurants, bars, you know, stuff like that to hang out at, but none of the nightlife. And if that's what you're looking for, you're probably not going to be too um, happy about Bellevue because, you know, you just don't get it. You know, luckily you're not far from Seattle. You know, you're only about 10, 15 minute shoot across the bridge and you're in downtown Seattle and you have all of that stuff. But, you know, it's just, it's just not here. It's a little bit more quiet, a little more laid back, which, you know, if that's the thing you're looking for, that's great. But, you know, if you're looking for that nightlife, you're not gonna find it here in Bellevue. Hey, if this is your first time here, welcome. My name is David Saffenfield. I'm a local Seattle Bellevue area real estate agent. And on this channel, we make new videos every week about what it's like to live, work, eat, play right here in Seattle, surrounding areas, just like Bellevue where we're at today. And you know, we get phone calls, text messages, emails every day from people just like you that are looking for help to make their move here to the Seattle area and nothing makes us happier. So if you're thinking about making that move, give us a call, shoot us a text, just reach out. Contact information is popping up on the screen right here. We'd love to help you make that smooth move to Seattle. Okay, let's get back to the video. Okay, another big one that people do not enjoy dealing with living here in Bellevue is the amount of traffic that you have to deal with. Now, I know that's true anywhere you live. You're going to hate traffic. You don't want to see it, but it is particularly bad here in Bellevue, you know, just due to the popularity of living here, the amount of people that live here. It's just there, there's so many people that are just kind of confined to this uh, small area, you know, whether you're downtown or kind of out a little bit more in the suburbs of Bellevue, you just run into traffic constantly. And there's, you know, other than there just being so many people, you know, that's the reason for traffic. There's quite a bit of construction going on in downtown Bellevue. So, you know, you can kind of see over my shoulder, you know, you have new high rise buildings going up. I'll throw up some drone footage here to kind of show you just how many different buildings are, you know, in the process of being constructed in downtown Bellevue right now. But that is really, you know, contributing to the, the, the traffic problems in the downtown area because a lot of the times they have streets closed off or detours that you have to work with and get around. So that's making commuting through the downtown area extra difficult right now. That should ease up as soon as you know they're done building all these big skyscrapers, these big tall office buildings. But for the time being, it's something that you got to deal with downtown in that area. And you know, even on the the freeway, the highway, you know, 405 that runs north and south right through Bellevue. From the time that you hit Bellevue 
heading south, 405 traffic is an absolute nightmare because what happens is it bottlenecks down to two lanes from three lanes. North of Bellevue, it's three lanes on 405. South of Bellevue, it goes down to two. And it doesn't seem to matter what time of day it is, there's always bad traffic on 405, Bellevue, and south. So, you know, if you're not having to go down south, then it's probably not that big of a deal for you. But if you are, keep that in mind. They are in the process of widening, adding a lane to, you know, Bellevue and south, uh, but that's gonna be several years away. But one thing that they are doing to help out, and it should help ease a lot of the traffic in the Bellevue area, especially when we're talking about commuting to Seattle, is the link light rail system is extending all the way over here to the east side. That's what we're standing in front of right now. This is the one, one of the link light rail stations here in Bellevue. We're just on the east side of 405. There's gonna be another one on the west side. You can kind of see it through there, but there's gonna be another stop over there on that west side of the, the highway, um, right downtown Bellevue. And then there's gonna be another one further south on that side in West Bellevue, right after it comes across on Mercer Island there. So that's gonna help with traffic getting into Seattle. You can also hop on it, head down to Redmond, but you know, traffic, like I said, no one likes to deal with it no matter what city you live in. But if you are in Bellevue, gosh, it's just something that you gotta deal with and cause it's, it's, uh, it's really in your face and right here, it doesn't matter what day or seems like what time of day you're gonna deal with traffic. You know, another thing that people tend to have a difficult time with when making the move to Bellevue or really just anywhere in the Seattle region in general is the weather that we have here. Now, it's probably not a surprise to you that Seattle kind of has that reputation for being a rainy city, uh, you know, gray, dreary weather. And it's 100% true, you know, during the winter months, it gets dark, it gets dreary and rainy, and it's kind of tough to deal with. You know, from the, let's say, November all the way through April, May, you don't see a lot of sunlight. The sun sets early, you get like seven or eight hours of daylight, if that, and you get a lot of rain. Now, when we're talking about like total rainfall, Seattle doesn't really get that much from a total rainfall. Um, if we're looking at that metric alone, you know, I think we're like in the top 30 or 35 as far as like major cities and total rainfall. But what we do get is just dreary, sort of drizzly days that happen consecutively. You know, it's not uncommon to get a week or two of just dreary, gross weather that makes it tough to deal with. Uh, on a daily basis. It just kind of wears on you after a bit. So, you know, if you are the type of person that might be, you know, susceptible to, uh, you know, uh, depression or seasonal affective disorder, then, you know, getting a vitamin D supplement, probably not a bad idea for you. And, you know, just kind of help keep your keep your spirits up, keep you, keep you cheered up because it, it's pretty easy to get down, get, 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 nah, not depressed, but you know, if you're susceptible to that, maybe, but so just something that you need to keep in mind and, you know, be prepared for, be aware of is that you're just not going to see a lot of sun, especially in these winter months here in Seattle or Bellevue, anywhere in this entire region. Okay, another big reason why you may want to avoid moving to Bellevue. This is a big one. This is probably the number one reason that people pretty much come to the realization that Bellevue might not be the place for them. And that is the incredibly high cost of living for Bellevue, Washington. Now, cost of living in Seattle is high, uh, you know, relative to the uh, nation average. It is even higher in Bellevue than it is in Seattle. So what I wanna do is jump into the computer here. I wanna show you a breakdown category by category of the cost of living expenses for Bellevue. Now, there are a couple different categories where the 
expenses are cheaper than the national average, but for the most part, it's more expensive in Bellevue and a couple major categories where it's way more expensive. So let's jump in the computer right now and I'll pull that up and just give you an exact idea of what you're gonna be looking at compared to the national average. Okay, here we go. I have Bellevue pulled up. Uh, this is an excellent resource that um, I usually recommend to compare cost of living, uh, maybe the city you're coming from, compare it to the city you're going to. And that website is bestplaces.net. It's really informative and gives you a breakdown category by category of cost of living and multiple other um, you know data points that you can get off of this website. But their cost of living analysis and comparison is really helpful and um, I, I find myself referencing it quite a bit if you've seen it in any of the other videos on the channel you probably have seen that but um, so we have Bellevue pulled up here in the bestplaces.net and it gives a, a cost of living score and Bellevue score is 158.1 and Basically what that means is that it is 58.1% more expensive to live in Bellevue than the national average. So they give the national average a score of 100, Bellevue is at 158.1. So 58.1% um, higher to live in Bellevue and it gives an actual breakdown of these costs and these expenses. And let me just kind of go over those with you really quick. Um, this top this top category here is just overall, which we just kind of went over. But for groceries, um, they get a score of, Bellevue gets a score of 111.7. So 11.7% higher than the national average as far as groceries go. Uh, healthcare is one of those categories where it's gonna be a little bit cheaper here. Uh, Washington, Seattle, Bellevue, you know, it's a lot of active people. So I think that, you know, just the overall condition, health health condition of a lot of the residents brings down those healthcare costs a little bit. So you're about 12% below the national average for that. Housing, this is the big one. So housing, it gets a score of 399.5. So basically 400, which is 300% higher than the national average. So that is where a lot of the expense is going to be coming from is that housing, um, you know, the, the cost of living for the housing and the median home price for like single family homes in Bellevue, just talking about single family, you're looking around 1.6 million. And, you know, they give a median home cost down here of 1.28, but that's a combined single family with condos, which is still ridiculously high. But um, yeah, that's, that's where a lot of the extra expense is gonna come from right there in your housing costs. Uh, so utility costs, 71. One, so that's nice. Uh, you really get, uh, you know, like a 29% below the national average. Never really gets too hot, never really gets too cold here in the Seattle metropolitan area. So that's why you're going to see big savings on utilities, potentially from where you're coming from, depending on, you know, where you're coming from, of course. But, you know, you might see some savings to help offset those higher cost of living costs right there. Uh, transportation costs. So you're looking at 128.9. 28 or 29% above the national average. And for transportation, this is just uh, right here. It says overall index for transportation costs, including gasoline, commuting, and auto insurance. So 29% uh, basically higher than the national average. And then we have miscellaneous, which is 150.9 or 51% higher than the national average. And that includes expenses like restaurants, uh, clothing, entertainment, education, and personal care items. So um, that's that's where uh, that, that 158.1 number, that's where what they have gotten it from. And uh, like I said, this is probably the biggest reason why a lot of people choose not to call Bellevue home would be because of the cost of living. And, um, you know, talking about the median home price, let me jump into the computer. I'll pull up the MLS and I'll just show you a little bit about what it, you know, what homes that have sold recently, homes that are on the market currently. We'll go over a couple of those and I'll show you just what you can expect to see in these price points in Bellevue. So let's, let's jump over there real quick.
Okay, we are in the MLS here, the Northwest Multiple Listing Service, and we have Bellevue in the middle of the map. And what we wanna do here is, I just pulled up three recent sales, and by recent, I mean within the last six months, and then two active homes that are currently available in the Bellevue market that's you know closer to that median price point, just below it actually. So um, let's start down south here. And this one is in the Robinswood neighborhood, kind of that Lake Hills neighborhood. But uh, this is a three bedroom, one and three quarter bath, uh, 1,450 square feet, almost an 8,000 square foot lot. And this one sold just below this price. So they listed at 1.425 and it sold just below that at 1.410. It was on the market for five days. And this one sold in at the end of August. So August 21st. So but pretty, pretty close to, you know, current, but um, this one is a, you know, 1957 uh, one story home, nicely renovated, has that kind of mid-century model modern look to it. You'll see that a lot with homes in Bellevue, the, the mid-century look here. So, um, but this one's been renovated nicely. Looks like the windows are updated. Uh, exterior has been painted. Definitely has some, some updates on the, the inside here. So really nice turnkey, ready to go home. I love these waterfall uh, islands here. The, I love the look of that and it's pretty nice. But uh, yeah, good size yard. Um, let's move on to the next one here. I don't want to spend too much time on each one of these. But this one is a, a recently active home. This one just came on the market today. We're in early February, just to give you a reference of date of what we're looking at here. Uh, but this is a four bedroom, two bathroom, 1,630 square foot, uh, just over a 10,000 square foot lot. And it's listed at 1,399,000. And again, it's a one story home built in 1957. I think that's what that last one was. So you see lots of homes in the 50s, 60s. A lot of, um, a lot of the homes in Bellevue have that mid-century uh, modern feel. Some of them not so modern that haven't been updated. But this one, I believe, has been updated. It looks, at least from the exterior here. So nice big Rambler, one story. Nice hardwood floors. So yeah, got some recent updates on this one. So not much would need to be done to this one either. Uh, 1.399 and this one has an offer review date. So we'll see, we're seeing a lot of the homes that are coming on the market have an offer review date where they set and they take a look at offers the following week. And that's the case with this one. So just to kind of keep you in the loop with that. But um, yeah, that one just came on. Here's another one that just came on the market in Bellevue here. And this one is a three bedroom, one and three quarter bathroom, 1,480 square foot just over a 10,000 square foot lot, and it's listed at 1449, uh, 900. This one's in the Tamashanner neighborhood, nice little quiet uh, golf community. There's a, a golf course in there, so uh, really nice, really desirable area. Uh, this one's built in 67, and it's just a one story. Yeah, one story. Well, let's take a look at some pictures here real quick. So this one definitely needs a little bit more renovations. Hasn't been done probably since the 90s, I'm guessing by the looks of things. But uh, yeah, you definitely could use some some updates on this one. And uh, yeah, 1449, so really nice, really nice community though. Tam Shanner is very desirable. That's a, a great part of town to, uh, to buy a home in, but you do pay a little bit more for it. Uh, here's another one that just closed recently. This is, uh, from November of 23, uh, listed at 1495 and sold below this price at 1.4 million, five days on the market. This is a four bedroom, two and a quarter bathroom, 1,920 square foot and uh, 7,200 acre, uh, 7,200 square foot lot. So uh, another one story home. You'll see it, like I said, it's kind of a recurring theme here. You'll see that a lot here in Bellevue. 
Uh, it looks like that's really nice updates, kind of has that open concept. I bet they probably took a few walls out of this one. And uh, yeah, it's a uh, nice, nice open floor plan, which people love. And then, so yeah, that one sold at one four. And then let's check out this last one here. Again, I don't want to spend too much time looking at these, but uh, this one is uh, three bedroom, two bathroom, 2,260 square foot, 9,400 square foot lot. They listed at 1.3 and it sold at 1.39. Now this home is like right next to Microsoft. So super, super desirable area, you know, really close uh, to campus there. So Microsoft employees are all over this one. Uh, this one sold in November uh, for the, you know, 90,000 above list price. But this one was built in 1985. So a little newer, one story uh, Rambler check out the pictures of the inside here so yeah it's looks like it's in pretty good shape the kitchen's always the one that'll tell you so yeah it looks like it has some nice updated countertops the cabinets look like they probably could use some uh replacing those are a little bit older but uh you know decent you know you wouldn't have to do anything to it but inside does look a little bit dated um definitely uh looks like it's an ada compliant home here and uh so yeah that gives you a good idea um and all of these homes that we looked at were just below the median price point here in bellevue but should like I said, give you a good idea of what you can expect in Bellevue. One of the complaints or drawbacks that I hear the most from buyers when they're shopping in Bellevue, aside from the cost of living and just house prices in general, is the type of house that you're gonna get. Most of the homes here in, in most of the Bellevue neighborhoods are very well-established neighborhoods that were built in the 50s, 60s, 70s. That's primarily what you're gonna see for the most part. Like a lot of these homes that are around me right now, a lot of one-story homes. Uh, sometimes you'll see one story with a basement, some two-story, some split-entry homes, but they're dated, you know, for the most part. They're, they're all in these really well-established neighborhoods, which is great because you have these big, beautiful trees around nice, nice established neighborhoods. But if you are the kind of person that doesn't want an older home, if you're looking for newer and modern, you're gonna have a little bit of a tougher time finding that here in Bellevue. Now, once in a while, you will be able to find where they've knocked down one of the older homes and built a newer one, which is like what we see right here. This used to be an older home, they tore it down built a brand new, beautiful, modern home, but it's, it's kind of hit or miss, you know? And if you're not okay being in a neighborhood like this, that's well-established and has older homes, if you're trying to be in a neighborhood amongst newer homes like this one that have that modern look, that modern feel, you're gonna have a difficult time finding that in Bellevue because there's just not a lot of large communities that are newer, newer construction. It's all established, 60s, 70s, like, like I was saying. So um, if you're wanting that newer house, Bellevue probably won't work for you. If you want a newer neighborhood, let's say, um, you know, you might want to expand the search options to Kirkland, Redmond. You know, you might have some better options in those in those cities but you know what we can help you whatever you're looking for whether it's new construction whether it's an established home built in the 60s or 70s you know we're happy to help if you're planning on making that move here to the seattle area or somewhere like bellevue give us a call shoot us a text send us an email contact information is popping up right here reach out we'd love to help you out help you make that smooth move to seattle and if you want even more information about bellevue pros and cons vlog tours click on this playlist right here that's popping up that'll give you the best videos out there all about bellevue everything you want to know so check those out right there and we'll see you next time take care bye